Yes, and true it. One hundred dollars gold. Hmm. Mason boy, where are you? Right here, Luke. I had supper ready, only we ran out of flour. What you doing hiding behind those trees, boy? When I rode up, I told you I was only going to be gone a few hours. Well, you know I'm not armed, Luke. I'm just keeping out of sight till I found out who it was. Is that the only reason? What other reason? <sighs> you think I was the law? What are you getting at, Lute? You know, boy, we've been traveling now for a few days. And I picked you up and let you come along with me because I thought you needed help. Just when I was getting fond of you, too. Here I find out all along you've been lying. I never lied to you. You never told me you've been to sea. You never asked me. You never told me your last name. You never asked me that, neither. Well, I don't have to ask you now. Your name's Pruitt. And uh, you want it back at Norfolk for desertion and stealing. All right, Lou. I jumped ship. That much is true, but I never stole. You know a slave called Solomon? Where'd you hear of him? Town this afternoon. I asked you if you knew him. Yeah, he was cabin boy on that ship I was serving on. If anybody stole, he did. I kind of knew you try to put that on to someone else. You don't believe me? I like to, but I reckon uh, nobody would pay $100 gold just to have you back for jumping ship. That's the going price on you. How much did you steal, boy? You can trust me? Just tell me where it is. We'll both go get it, and nobody else will know the wiser. Luke, told you I never stole nothing. Oh, now, that's a shame. You won't confide in me. What do you mean? I mean I'll be shirking my duty. As a law-abiding citizen, if I didn't turn you in, don't try to jump me, boy. I'd regret to do it, but I'll shoot you if I have to. You're a bounty hunter. I've been known to dabble in it when the price was right. You call me a liar. Tell me you're a trapper and we're going to rendezvous with some of your friends. That much is true. Uh, two or three days, we're going to rendezvous. And uh, I am a trapper. But there's no trapping in the summertime, and a man's got to turn it on his dollar when and how he can. All right, Luke. You hold all the cards, I guess you win. That's what I call being real sensible, boy. Go on, grab yourself a mouthful of coffee. And uh, we're going to talk about where it is. Did you hide it around here? Maybe you around here next to that tree? Hmm? Ah! <laughs> Shouldn't have done that, boy. I'll get you for that, boy. I'll get you, I swear. I'll get you for that, boy. Daniel Boone was a man. Yes, a big man. With an eye like an eagle and as tall as a mountain.
Same to you. I'll stay here and tidy up the camp a bit. You don't know what you're going to be missing. <laughs> I know what I'd be missing. I'd end up in town and get lost. The next thing I know, I'd end up on an auction block and spend the rest of my years chopping cut. Oh, well, that's just plain <laughs> foolish. Now, you was born free. In Canada, I was born free and reasonably white. Around here, I'm free and maybe just a little bit darker. But you'd be surprised how black I get the minute we cross over the mountains into Virginia. Gideon, you got papers proving that you ain't no slave. And there's an awful lot of folks in this territory who don't know how to read. Since now, this is no use trying to argue with him anymore. He's just trying to get out of doing any work. Hoss, I think you read my mind. I'd rather stay here and fish instead. Well, now fresh trout would taste good for supper. Mm -hmm. Providing you know how to cook them. Maybe I forgot to tell you. I've been asked to cook for royalty in my day. A princess of the Chippewa. Seems she heard about a recipe of mine for barbecue and bear. Barbecue and bear. Daniel, if there's one thing I can't abide, it's a man that ain't got the least regard for the truth. You mean to say you don't believe me? Well, Gideon, I don't know about Cincinnati, but I believe you. Be back about sundown. Help! Man, I just stand still and don't make a move. I don't want to kill you unless I have to. You don't know how much that does to ease my mind. Now, just what can I do for you? Get me up a sack of grub. Well, shucks, if you're hungry, you don't need that gun. If you rest yourself for a bit, I'll cook up these trout, and there's enough for both of us. When I tell you to do something, black man, you do it. Now, get me up some grub. Anything you say. My old pappy told me never to argue when I'm looking down the muzzle of a gun. All right. Now, maybe we can sit and talk. I don't take real kindly to folks who try and steal from me or shoot me. Drop that knife, black man! Get your hands in the air! Ah, now. Turn around real slow. Looks like these woods is getting overrun with thieves. 
goes on, on, before one is decide to run. And then I'll have to spoil some valuable property. Loot, you caught me fair and square, but you can't chain me up to him. Why not? Because I just spent six months in a ship's hole full of his kind, and I don't like the sight or color of him. So, you're a blackbird, huh? What's wrong with that? Boy, if you don't know, I reckon I ain't got the time to tell you. Talk like Yo! That. Hey, hey, oh! Pick up them there irons like I said and get back there and put them on. Make sure you put them on your friend Solomon, too. That was nice of you, Mason. You led me right smack to him. I must say, you two make quite a pair. I don't know who you are, and I don't know who this Solomon is, but whoever he is, I ain't him. Don't go pretending ignorance to me. Mason here told me all about you before he cut out and ran on me. I already told you before I never heard of no Solomon, except the one they mentioned in the Bible. My name's Gideon, Gideon Chartow. I was born free in Canada. In fact, I got my papers right here to prove it. Here, you read these papers, mister, and you see just how wrong you are. Don't you pay him no mind, Lute. You're right. His name's Solomon. I came here to meet him. You read the papers, mister. Don't make any difference whether your name's Solomon or not. You'll make a fine price on a slave mark. Lute, you let me go free, I'll tell you where he hid that money. That's what we was fighting about. Uh, after all the lying you done to me, <laughs> I ain't gonna take your word for it. He can't tell you where the gold is, Mr. Loot, cause I ain't told him. You admit to being Solomon? Well, I can see there ain't no use trying to outsmart a man like you. I'm called Solomon. How do I know you ain't lying to me? But then we got lots of time to find out between here and Norfolk. Norfolk? That's a long ways to travel, Mr. Loot. It'll take us a while. Where else am I gonna collect a bounty on you two? Now, you just sit there. I have to do a little forging. Might need a little more grub before we get to go where we're going. Your name ain't Solomon. I know that, and you know that. But your head hunting friend don't know that, and just for now, I'd like to keep him in a little doubt. Well, where do you think that's gonna get you? I'll think of something. Double cross me if you can. If it's to my advantage. Don't you ever try, because if I get out of this... If you do get out of this, I'll get out of it too. And you stay clear of me, boy, because I don't care for your kind any more than you seem to care for mine. You trying to scare me? I don't reckon that would take too much, because you're all mouth and no backbone. I'm going to get you for that black man. Mason, don't you ever lift your hand to me, boy, or I'll eat you before breakfast. Ah, uh, right, you two, get up. You got cornmeal, you got ham, and you got a layer of bacon. Mm, you've been living high off the hall, ain't you? Feller's got to eat to keep up his strength. Yeah, well, you're gonna need it after I'm through with you. You ain't been camping here all alone, have you, boy? You see some signs of someone else? I see three bedrolls over there. Well, I'll be honest with you, Mr. Loot. I stole the wagon. Them bedrolls and supplies was in it. If you was to look real close, you're likely to see some wheel marks. Yeah, whatever happened to that wagon, boy? Well, I sold it to a trapper passing through. I thought maybe I could make better time afoot. You're lying again. Well, if you think so, why don't you just sit here and wait and see? I reckon that's just what you want me to do, ain't it? Yeah. Take this here and try make a nice little meal come supper time. All right, now let's move out. Which way? Right out amongst those trees there. Well, that's heading north, Mr. Loot. 
That's the wrong way to Norfolk, unless somebody's gone and moved the whole Atlantic Ocean. Who said I was going in that direction? <laughs> That's just what you want me to do, ain't it? <laughs> well, I don't aim to leave a plain trail. Yeah. All right, now, you move out in the direction I said. Yo! Give you a hand? I don't need any help from you. Time might come. And when it does, you'll ask. Now get up on your feet. Here comes the man. Boys up to. Now move along. Mr. Lute, this boy's just plain tuckered out. I don't figure he can travel much more, not with night coming on. Don't worry about me, black man. I ain't worrying about you. I'm worrying about me. The way you keep stumbling and falling all the time, you have to break a leg for both of us. We'll move on ahead and find ourselves a place to camp. Come on. Don't seem to worry much about us making a run for it. Now, how far do you think we could run? And how fast with these shackles on? I know what you're thinking. Once we get to Norfolk, you'll figure you're not Solomon, and then you think you'll be free. Your friend Lute already answered that. He'll put me on the auction block. He ain't no friend of mine. He just pretended that till he found out there was a price on my head. Well, how much of a price? Hundred dollars. It's a nice round figure. I've known men to get sold for less. And I never even done it. Well, let's get along before he comes back looking for us. <laughs> What's going on here? Look at this. Must have been some bear rummaging around for some food. Well, if it was a bear, he was wearing horseshoes. Did you find something, Daniel? Gideon's papers. No. Looks like he was right. There are some people in the territory that can't read or don't bother to. Daniel, I ain't even going to say what I'm thinking. Well, you don't have to. You started a sign. You can see that there were three of them. Two of them were in leg irons, and one of them wearing leg irons was Gideon. Well, what about the other one? I don't know. Ex-convict, runaway slave. Daniel, we just got to get Gideon back. Otherwise, whoever's got him is going to try and make a slave out of him. We'll get him back. Well, let's get started then. Well, they've headed for the heavy timber. We can't use the wagon. I reckon we better unhitch the team. Daniel, I got over $100 of trade goods in there. And if I lose them, I can get more, but I can't get another friend like Gideon. I know how you feel, Cincinnati, but we got another problem. It's almost sundown, and we can't track him after dark. <laughs> Get up. Turn around. You understand, I 
I don't like to do this, but a man's got to get his sleep. And I ain't so sure that I can trust either one of you. When I close my eyes... Well, you could hear this chain rattling if we was to even make a move. Uh, maybe I can, and then again, maybe I couldn't. Leastways, I'm not going to be taking any chances. Mason, tie his hands tight. And this ain't going to be real comfortable for you, but it's going to do wonders for my peace of mind. Now, you ain't tying that tight. I said real tight, boy, and you make it tight. <laughs> Try that again, boy. I'm a peace-loving man, and you may make get real close to making me mad. There ain't no use in you talking to him, Mr. Loot. He can't hear you. Maybe he can't, but you can. And don't you get any cute ideas about taking me, because that ain't gonna be a patch of what I'm gonna do the next time. When I decide to jump you, Mr. Loot, I'm gonna get the job done real fast. Just say when. I will say when. It's a long ways from here to Norfolk, and it stands to reason you gonna get a little careless. Don't depend on it, Bar. Now you take Mason and drag him to that tree, quick! Or I'm gonna lose my patience and bust you one right over your head. I like to be a peace-loving man. <laughs> Why didn't you help me when I had him down? We could have got away. With these irons on. He's got a key. Have you seen it? No, but it stands to reason. Well, what I've seen of your head hunting friend, I don't doubt he's already thrown the key away. And if we'd have tried to break and run, he'd have shot us both. Not if he was dead. Look, even if he didn't have a key, we could have found some way to get these chains off. You mean to tell me you were setting out to kill him? If you'd give me some slack in that chain, I could have finished him. Then I'm glad I stopped you. I don't hold with murder. What do you mean, murder? That's what it would have been. What do you think Luke would have done in my place? Shot you in the back, given the opportunity. So what's the difference if I kill him? The difference between you and him. What do you mean by that? The difference is Lute ain't got a conscience. He could shoot you down and never turn a hair. But you ain't like him. How do you know what I'm like? I'm talking to you, ain't I? I don't mean nothing. Answer me one question, Mason. Have you ever killed a man? Well, no, but... Then my advice to you is to keep it that way if you can. Killing ain't something you just do and then it's done. It's something you have to live with, and it ain't always real good company. <laughs> Well, Dan, I thought you were still sleeping. I thought you were, too. No, oh, I've just been traipsing back and forth here, worrying. Well, why don't you do your worry tomorrow and get some rest? We might have quite a ways to travel. Daniel, I just hope we ain't too late. Well, Cincinnati's look at it this way. If anybody was going to sell Gideon, they wouldn't be about to hurt him. And they can't travel very fast, no change. We'll catch up to him in time. I just feel in my bones that we should have taken right off after him. Well, now, if we had, some of those bones you're talking about might have been busted up, but this time out there in the dark. Now, get some rest. Mm. I reckon you're right, Daniel. Like this and half froze to death. 
Since that's the case, why don't we talk some more then? I got nothing else to talk to you about. Well, that's all a matter of opinion. I figure we got at least one thing in common. I got nothing in common with a black man. Well, the way I see it, we're each half owner in a pair of hobbles. And another thing is, I'm sharing the same treat with you. Look, will you shut up? Keep your voice down. You have to wake the man, and he might get displeased that you made a noise while he was sleeping. Is it just me you don't like, or is it my color? Well, it's your color, for one thing. That's interesting. Because sitting here back to back, you can't even see me. Look, I know you're black. And I don't like blacks. Then that's why you set out to be a slaver. Who said I set out that way? As I recall, it was you that said it. But that ain't what I said. Well, how come then you were on a ship with a whole black cargo? I was drinking in this waterfront saloon. And when I woke up, I was on my way to Africa. Does that answer your question? I do believe it does. Your only trouble is you got a guilty conscience. Well, if Solomon hadn't stole that money, I wouldn't be in trouble. And Solomon was black. So you got to hate me for it. Now, you take your friend Loot over there. Look, he ain't no friend of mine. He's no friend of mine either. In fact, I downright dislike him. Also, he's white. And you white, too. So the way you think, why don't I hate you? I thought you did. I could learn to if I set my mind to it. And if you keep on the way you started out, you said your name's Gideon? That's what it said in them papers Mr. Loot chose to throw away. Look, will you stop saying Mr. Loot? Call him by his right name. Let me tell you something, Mason. At one time in my youth, before I got domesticated, it was a well-known fact I could out-cuss any man in Canada. I remember the words, and I'm still cudgeling them in my brain, but I can't for the life of me figure out how to call anyone like Mr. Loot by his right name. About them papers. You know, if you don't get them back, you can prove you're free. Are you worrying about me? Worrying about you? I'd put you on an auction block right this minute if I could get the money to pay Loot off. About them papers. I got sort of a feeling they'll come looking for me. You really got a friend you're camping with? Yeah, I got a friend. Is he black like you? Well, I've heard it said some folks call him black-hearted. But on the outside, he tends to be light-colored. You two figured I was sound asleep, huh? Well, Mr. Lute, if we know you's a wick, we'd ask you to come over and join our conversation. I joined all right, except I was... Listening instead of talking. You hear anything of interest? I heard enough to make me change my plans. That's so. Figured I believe all that hogwash about you stealing that wagon and then selling it, didn't you? I had hoped you did. Well, now I know for sure that we ain't gonna camp here. So we'll just be moving on right now. Tonight! <laughs> Stupid man. I never saw a black man was smart anyway. You think I did wrong then? At least you could have looked to see if he was awake. A lot of good your friend's gonna do us now. Mason, a man can't look both ways at once. And it stands to reason, if he's looking back, he ain't likely to see what he's walking into. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, why don't you set yourself down a bit? I'm gonna go back there and check out everything. But I'll be watching you. Don't forget now. You think your friend can track us through this kind of country? Yeah, he can find a trail. This chain has got to leave a mark or two along the way. And what happens then? He's apt to get disturbed at me for letting myself get captured. You really think he can get you out of this? I'd like to keep that thought in mind. Would you ever stop to think he might get himself killed? By loot? By loot's friends. Where do you think we're going? The only name I've heard so far is Norfolk. That's after we meet loot's friends. They're waiting for us up at a cabin up in Indian Creek. Your friend's going to help us. You better get here pretty soon, because then we've got far to go. I'm real glad you mentioned that. What are you doing? I'm just leaving a little trail. <laughs> a lot of good that'll do us. It could do us a lot of good. Because from now on, one of us is going to get tired and start walking mighty slow. Hey, which one's that? Well, just looking at the two of us, which one of us do you figure could play out first? Which one? It stands to reason that it's got to be you. Oh, no, you don't. If I start lagging behind, Lute's gonna start hitting me with a rope. And if I start lagging, he's just bound not to believe me. Well, then we're just gonna have to go the way we've been going. I already said we can't do that because we'd be leading Daniel into a trap. Who's Daniel? He's a friend I mentioned who's trailing us. That's why one of us has got to start acting tired. Well, it's gonna be you. He's your friend, not mine. Mason, it's just a shame you can't see your way clear to cooperate. <laughs> You two boys, get up. What's wrong with him? He's tired. I'm gonna tell you something, boys. I'm getting plumb tired of you two always playing tricks on me. Now, will you tell him to get up? Mason, get up. You see, the poor boy just can't move. He's plain old every day, fainted from the heat and and climbing the hill and, and dragging all these chains behind him. Mason, boy, will you get up before I run out of patience and put a hole clean through you? You wouldn't take my word for it, would you? What am I gonna do? Hundred dollars worth of bounty line down there and your friends pushing me from behind? Well, the way I see it, Mr. Loot, you could let him stay there until his strength starts coming back. Let your friends catch up with me? I ain't gonna do it. Now you lie down there and turn around. I reckon a little water will revive him. Bring him too, all right, but I don't think it'll keep him moving. This boy just ain't cut out for traveling like this. You got a better way? Well, if you used to unlock these irons and let me carry them, we could make a whole lot better time. How come all of a sudden you're helping me now? I ain't trying to help you. I'm trying to help me. Walking with these irons is bad enough without trying to drag him at the end of them. How about your friend? I don't matter one way or another if he catches me. All he'd do is take me back where I started and have me whipped for trying to escape or shoot you for stealing me. You know what I think? I think you're lying. I think you're trying to play tricks on me and for your own good. I ain't gonna let you do it. Now pick him up. Huh? I said pick him up and let's move on. <laughs>
camped here a while last night. The ashes are still warm. We may just catch up with him tonight, but if that slaver figures we're tailing him. Well, why should he think that? He's got to figure out that Gideon wasn't camped alone and that sooner or later we'd come after him. Well, which way do you think they're headed? Well, we're never going to find out standing here. Come on. Oh. What's going on? How do you expect me to walk when this boy is so weak he keeps tripping me? He can't hardly put one foot in front of the other with all this weight. All right. Unlock him. Take the shekel off his foot and put it on your foot. And then throw me back that key. And no tricks, boy. <laughs> On, you can hurry fast in that ball. Let's go. Let's have that key. Come on. Ah, I'll take this rope. Tie his hands. Good and proper. Time comes, you cut and run. I'll let you know when. Will you expect me to outrun that horse? I expect to take care of that too. And what happens to you? Well, I'll still be walking and toting this iron I got draped on me. Oh, you expect me to come back and help you when I get free? Well, the idea had crossed my mind. What makes you think when I get free, I'm going to come back and help you? Well, neither one of us will ever know that until the time comes, will we? What are you two talking about? Just passing the time of day. You're plotting against me, ain't you? Thinking up some plan to get away, right? Why, Mr. Lute? Why would you think that? Why, Mason here's so tired, I don't think he could run. And besides, he wouldn't want to be out here in the woods all by himself with both his hands tied. And as you can see, I couldn't travel too far or too fast with, with these chains on. Now, you listen, Blackburn. You listen good. I ain't about to kill Mason. He's worth twice as much as you are. Besides, he's white. You give me trouble, I don't mind killing you. Now move out, quick! Daniel, we going as far as we can go. There ain't no way we can track him through this country. They've been bearing to the north. So I reckon we might as well go on through that gap. Well, if they didn't go that way, it might take some time before we can pick up the trail again. Well, if they did, if I know Gideon, he'll find some way to leave us some kind of sign. Yeah. Come on. Since Nash, we haven't lost the trail yet. Uh, hold on there. I reckon we've been waiting long enough to give somebody trouble if they've been tracking us. You aiming to ford the river here? You got anything against it? Well, not entirely, but I'd like to mention that these chains weren't made for swimming. If we step in a deep hole, I'm bound to sink. You just wait here, and I'll have a look around. Water cool you off for a while. Time has come. Come 
on, you two. Don't need a word, shallow all the way. Hey, what's wrong there? Run, Mason, run! they crossed over here? I don't know. It's a good bet they took to the stream to throw us off the trail. That ain't gonna help much. You reckon they went upstream or down? Well, that's a good question. So far, they've been angling downstream. Reckon we'll try that way first, where we can find where they crossed out. Yeah, well, there's one good thing. They ain't gonna make much time as long as they're in the water. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> What I should have done was let you drown instead of dragging you to shore. Only drowning is too good for you. Besides, I gotta get my money back. You already cost me a hundred dollars on the hoof and made me lose my horse. At least Mason got away. He did, but if you figured he's gonna come back to help you, you better think again. He's not the kind. Turned on me the way he did after I befriended him. Besides, I wasn't gonna turn him in unless he wouldn't tell me where he hid that money that he stole. He didn't steal it. How do you know? He told me. And you believed him, just like you believed that he was gonna come back and help you. I reckon that's up to him. I reckon it is. And I reckon you're not as smart as some dumb animals that I knew. That may be true. But I was smart enough to outthink you. Don't you go trying to urge me to kill you right here and now. Besides, I gotta get that money that I lost. You ain't never gonna get it back, cause you ain't never taken me in. The first chance I get, I'm gonna lift your scalp. Don't you go threatening me back! <laughs> <laughs> No, you don't. You thought you tricked me into getting me mad, didn't you? Well, I outsmarted you. Because there's nothing that you can do to make me cut your throat. But that doesn't mean to say that I can't teach you to go around not kicking people. See, that ain't so nice. So I'm going to strap you till you wish that I had used my knife. <laughs> Boy. I warned you, boy, but you didn't pay me no mind. And now you've gone and made me mad. I don't want to cut you, but it just seems I can't trust you anymore, Mr. Loot. Ah! <laughs> You all right, boy? Yeah, I'm fine. Mason, why did you come back? 
You could have got yourself killed dead just now. You could have got yourself killed dead trying to help me. That makes us even then. Well, not quite. There's one other thing. Get him. Here's your friends? Yeah. <laughs> Hoss, you and Cincinnati sure took your time getting here. Well, we kind of figured you was old enough to look after yourself, but it looks maybe like we were wrong. Who's he? This here is Mason Pruitt. You might say he's my traveling companion. You might say that he's my friend. Well, that's the other thing. Well, if you're a friend of mine, why don't you cut me loose so I can start explaining how I come to get myself tied up like this? <laughs> what are you going to do now, Mason? Well, first thing I have to do is go back to Norfolk. Get yourself thrown in jail? Could happen, but I got to try and get myself clear to that robbery charge. I'm tired of being hunted. And you're going to go back to sea? Oh, sir, one trip's enough for me. The truth is, well, I get seasick. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are you going to do then? I don't know. I haven't had much time to think about it. Well, didn't I hear you say you joined up with Purdy to go trapping? Yeah, it was before I found out there was a bounty on my head. Well, is that what you want to do? Well, I'd sure like to try, but I don't know much about it. Well, there's no finer place for trapping than Kentucky. And no finer trapper in Kentucky than Gideon. Think you could teach me, Gideon? You're stubborn, and you're awful slow to learn. But I could try. You just look me up when you get back from Norfolk. Well, I guess it's all settled then. Not all of it. Uh, what are you going to do with him? What you going to do with that now, missing boy? <laughs> What I ought to do is what you meant to do to me. I was only fun, and you know that. Remember how we used to be real good friends? Yeah, I remember. Uh, but... Oh, thank you. Thank you. Now get out of camp before I change my mind and skin you. Uh, ain't you gonna let me have my gun? You got some friends a little ways from here, don't you? Uh, well, I figure you'll make out all right. Could I have my horse? Uh, I think Giddy needs that horse a little more than you do. That'll about make him even. Now get out. You drive a hard bargain, boy. But just to show you, there ain't no bad feelings. Uh, don't ride that horse through Salem, because that's where I stole him. Yeah.